Hello, beautiful people, and welcome. Hi, to my first impressions on Kanich. Kanich came out yesterday, and I've been testing him for, for a little bit, and so far, I quite like him. I, I think he's a pretty enjoyable character to play. I expected him to be fun, and I'm, I'm glad that I he didn't fall short of my expectations. He didn't really exceed them either. He's pretty much what I expected, but considering my expectations were for him to be fun, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. As usual, I did a bunch of testing on a bunch of different teams. However, this abyss is very misleading when it comes to Kanish testing, and I want to give you guys this, this as a, a, a warning against getting too caught up in the moment, or getting too caught up in the numbers. First, this blessing gives Natlan character 80% elemental skill damage and normal attack damage, but in Kanicha's case, it's the skill damage that matters. That's a lot. 80% is a massive buff, which means that the damage numbers you're gonna see in the Abyss testing is gonna be a lot bigger than what you're actually supposed to see. If you just look at my build, his skill is currently talent level eight. His artifacts overall are nothing outstanding, but pretty solid considering how long 5.0 has been out. I did a bunch of refreshes to make sure I could get a viable set. Feather is a little underwhelming, obviously. Flower is pretty good. Sands is pretty good. And Circlet is okay. All in all, the damage I'm missing out on from my build being worse than what you'd expect on my other characters, and from my skill being level 8 instead of 9 or 10, the damage I lose from that is a lot less than the damage I get from the Abyss Blessing. So, despite having a build that is far from complete yet, the numbers you'll see in the Abyss showcases are still inflated because the Blessing is just so good. But yeah, outside of that though, the matchups in this abyss are not great for him. He's fine on the second half, but testing on the second half is never uh, is never ideal. You never really want to test on the second half when a new character comes out, because it means you have to clear the first half every time you want to test something. And, and when it comes to first half testing, there's a Pyro Elemental Shield that forces you to bring a Hydro unit. You're not strictly forced, you can just brute force it, but it's not good. And then on top of that, you've got the Jade Bloom Terror Shroom with Dender Resistance and the Yimkasaur, which I think also has Dender Resistance. So the first half is really bad for him when it comes to testing. So most of the testing has been done on the second half, which obviously means I haven't been able to do as much testing because I need to clear the first half every time. Also do keep in mind that this Abyss is a lot easier than the previous Abyss. So seeing good clear times doesn't necessarily mean his insane. But uh, yeah, I'll leave you guys with the with the testing footage and I will I will see you in the outro. die already or what? Go back, go back, go back, go back. Well, f you, I guess. If I just need to stay far enough away that he doesn't. What the? F I guess I can stay far enough away so that he doesn't move. My bad.
it's a bit annoying, but what to do? Really? It wasn't enough to kill? I died before I could move. You you guys have to agree that's bullshit, no? annoying enemy. <laughs> I've never really realized it, but holy f what an annoying enemy. Why can I not shoot him? Well, that's bullshit. still a good team because it's Hyper Bloom.
That's not what I do. I don't want to use my burst again, dude. Yes, all has been well. Thank you for the 16 months effort. I'm missing a little bit of VR. Not too much, but... Just enough to be cringe. Why wasn't I able to move? What? What's that all about?
again. I'm not gonna die, am I? I'm, I'm gonna take you things so. out. You saved my life. You little shit! Sing Tso, you suck! He's been performing pretty well. I've been having a lot of fun with him. I, I want to quickly go over some of the teams that I've used for him and talk about how they felt overall. As a general rule, most of the teams that didn't use Bennett kind of felt like us. The Baiju Farina team that didn't use Bennett felt okay. And the just Thor Hyper Bloom with uh, Nahida Raiden Sing So also felt okay. Other than that, if you're looking for a team that pretty much everyone will be able to make for him, putting him in the National Corps works completely fine. Personally, I don't really like this team more than the Sugros National because Sugros National has been my personal favorite team for a pretty long time, but it does have some upsides over it. It's a lot easier to play. The, the setups are pretty brain dead. You're kind of just mashing your keyboard and things will work out. So despite me not particularly loving it over the, the Sucrose version instead of Kanich, it's definitely still a pretty solid Kanich team if you don't have any of his other teammates available. I wouldn't say it's better than the alternatives, but it's close enough that I wouldn't feel too unhappy with it. Other than that, I think that when it comes to Bena Changling, the last teammate that you'd want really is Farina. And if you're not going to be using Farina in the last slot, I think Changling is a bit of a waste. She will always be able to work, but the damage that you'll get from Shangling without external buffs isn't actually that incredibly high. So you're going to want to have her on Deepwood, and then if you have her on Deepwood, that makes her damage even lower. And then if her damage is even lower, and in order to snapshot her, you have to lose Bennett uptime on Kinich, you start getting to the point where it might be better off just using a different unit instead and using their abilities before you swap to Bennett, which is where Dea and Toma truly shine. Personally, I prefer Dea over Toma. One, because it's Dea, and two, because she's not energy reliant, and because you need to have them on Deepwood, it's a bit harder to have enough ER on Toma for him to do his thing. And then, obviously, the last slot is pretty much some form of, of off-field damage. Emily is definitely the best slot here, but you can get away with other things as well. I'd say that the main two teams that I've found to be the most effective are this one, the one with Deya Emily, and this one with Changling Farina. These have been my two favorite teams for him. The worst part of it so far hasn't really been anything gameplay related. It's the fact that if you want to play this team, you want your Changling on Deepwood, and that means she's not on Emblem, and that means you have to swap your builds around, and then your Changling's gonna be on the wrong build next time you play her in another team, and that's a pain in the ass. <laughs> That's pretty much the biggest flaw. It's that that, that Pyro character, either Shangling or Dea, is going to want to be on Deepwood and is going to make it a pain in the ass the next time you play that character in another team. If you want to minimize that, I guess you could have a custom preset for Shangling that's Deepwood and then rely on the default preset 
to put her back on emblem. Like you, you can do quick configuration to put her back on emblem. So that means you'll you'll need to have your artifacts free. And then you you set up your custom configuration to be on Deepwood. But the fast equip system is so bad that it's 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 still not something I'd really rely on. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the teams. Obviously, I haven't covered every single team you can play, but this definitely has been the the main teams I recommend for him. In terms of how strong he is overall, honestly, he's pretty solid. Again, it's kind of hard to properly evaluate him because the Abyss Blessing is so good on him, but I would definitely put him in like the, the upper average of carries. He's strong and unique enough to justify his place on your account if you want him, but not so strong that you'll feel like you're missing out on something if you don't have him like Nebula. Compared to Molani, I mean, he's easier to play, I think. Getting his kit to properly work will take a, a someone who, who hasn't looked into him beforehand maybe like a, a, a 10 20 minutes of, of actually like testing and practicing but once you get the, the basic controls down he's very straightforward and pretty easy to play whereas with molani the basic controls are very straightforward and easy but you're a lot more reliant on good timing with the rest of your team so you're getting the right rotations matters a lot more and for more casual players that tends to be a bit harder than just the sort of difficulty that comes with kanicha's early learning curve i'd say that for experienced players that focus more on speedrunning, Milani is definitely better. Whereas if you're looking at more casual gameplay, I probably would say that Kanich is better. Obviously, there's a limit to how much I can guess like this, right? I have to extrapolate from how I expect other people to experience the game. Uh, so let me know if, if you find him to be better or worse in the comments. Let me know if uh, if you agree with my assessment. I'll be covering this more in the post-release, obviously. So you can look forward to that. And uh, so I will be seeing you guys in the next one. Bye, YouTube.